Since South Tyrol was transferred from the sovereignty of the Habsburg Empire to Italy at the end of the First World War, Alpine and Mediterranean elements have constantly intermingled. This is easy to see in the marketplace, where, incidentally, almost everyone speaks fluent German and Italian. On the Bolzano market not only can you find traditional local delicacies, such as the famous South Tyrolean bacon, but also a wide selection of Mediterranean products. The people who shop here use products from both cultures for their cooking, and these are increasingly being combined to make new dishes. The Schoeneck restaurant in Falzen in Val Pusteria has won several awards. The man in charge is Karl Baumgartner, one of the best chefs in the country. He has just created a tortelloni filling from local wild vegetables and Val Pusteria Topfen, better known as quark. The wild vegetable and quark tortelloni are served on a mousse made from fresh peas with mint. Karl Baumgartner is not shy about using the best of both culinary cultures, the Alpine Tyrolean with its Austro-Hungarian touch and the Mediterranean with its southern sophistication. The farmers also contribute to the good reputation of the South Tyrolean cuisine, with a wide variety of local produce and animal husbandry, which nearly always meets consumers' expectations. Karl Baumgartner can be found in St. Lorenzen several times a week. Here, and only here, is where he buys his meat. He always finds what he needs at his namesake, Jakob Baumgartner's butcher's shop. Today, he has bought four kids. He aims to use only fresh local products of the highest quality in his kitchen. This is not only good for the senses, but also for the environment and the local economy. Meat is very important for him, and dishes with kid have always been among his personal favorites. Considering how famous South Tyrol is for bacon, lay people might be amazed that he uses bacon from Tuscany. Yes, this is a lardo di colonnata. It's an Italian air-dried white bacon, which is not smoked and simply melts in the mouth. A South Tyrolean bacon would be a bit too aggressive for this dish because it's naturally smoked and that would drown all the other flavors. Karl Baumgartner recommends sprinkling the kid with the juice of two whole limes. The oven is preheated to 200 degrees and in it goes. The temperature is reduced to 160 degrees after an hour. The kid is served with roast potatoes and baby vegetables. After the meat has been in the oven for one and a half hours in all, it has a beautiful golden brown color and it is drizzled again. Finally, we pour the stock of olive oil, lard, limes and fresh herbs over the kid. I think this is a super dish and I wish you a bon appétit. Lunch is still the most important meal for over 70% of South Tyroleans. <laughs> this also applies in Vilnius. Farmer Maria Obexer lives here with a splendid view of the Geisler Peaks. She has a reputation throughout the valley as a superb cook, especially where bacon dumplings are concerned. In addition to white bread cubes, parsley, roasted onion, eggs, milk and flour are used for this dish. The bacon comes from their own smokehouse. Bacon from the belly piece with a decent amount of fat is the best for dumplings. Once the mixture with the bacon cubes has been kneaded, it should be left to stand for at least 15 minutes before you start to form the dumplings. Bacon dumplings are boiled for about 20 minutes in a partially covered pan of salt water. This most typical of all Alpine Tyrolean dishes is almost always served as a main meal, as it is here on the Pinaiderhof. Bacon dumplings are always served with soup, 
a hearty traditional beef and vegetable soup that has been cooked for at least two hours. The Obexes were among the first in the valley to offer overnight accommodation on their farm to tourists. They used to be paid in kind. The visitors gave what they had with them and didn't need, and the Obexes were happy with it. 1,500 meters above sea level, crops were cultivated on the Orbe Niederhof until 50 years ago. Today, the Orbe Niederhof is an organic farm with apartments to rent and homemade products for sale. The ancestors of today's farmers knew exactly how to make first-class bacon, which keeps well in storage and tastes delicious. For two years, the Tapainas have also been producing yogurt and cheese from the milk of their grey cattle, much of which goes to the hotels in the valley. In addition to black-nosed sheep, they also keep Swabian hall pigs on the Oberniederhof. This breed enjoyed great popularity for generations in the mountains of South Tyrol. The Tapainas make bacon from them. For foreign guests, the most popular part is the hammer, the leg of the pig. It is actually a ham, smoked and dried. South Tyrolean bacon is a speciality. It is only produced for sale in small quantities by about 20 farmers. Gourmets claim that there is no comparison to normal South Tyrolean bacon. If you want to produce and sell Bauernspeck today, you need a butcher. The Tapainas bring their pigs to Nick's butcher in Terlan. Here they are well equipped for processing organic bacon. First, the meat is marinated in the farm's own blend of seasoning, consisting of salt, marjoram, rosemary, cumin and allspice. And there are also some of the farm's special secrets in there. After smoking with juniper at a maximum of 20 degrees, the bacon is taken down to the storerooms. The production of Bauernspeck involves processing different parts of the pig into bacon. That's why you can see pork bellies hanging here alongside legs of pork. The proper temperature and humidity are the main criteria for making sure the Bauernspeck is a real delicacy. But the mould too plays a crucial role in the production of first-class bacon. This one's fresh out of the smokehouse. This one's been there longer, three or four months, and mold has formed on it because of the humidity. It actually protects the bacon from drying out, which is very important. It means the bacon can mature nice and slowly from the inside out. South Tyrolean bacon, whether from the belly or leg, is always accompanied by the typical hard Schüttelbrot. The Schüttelbrot dough consists mainly of rye and wheat flour. Water, yeast, salt, some fennel and cumin are added. Every morning at half past five, everyone in the bakery joins in with the shaking of the dough. There is a special reason why this dough has to be shaken by hand. You can't roll out a sticky dough like this. This is rye flour and it sticks. And so you need to use some bran and then you shake it. That's how the original bread is made. But now you also get schüttelbrot that's no longer shaken but sprayed by machine. This is the way the farmers used to make it. Schüttelbrot is extremely tasty and keeps for months. It's highly appreciated by many consumers at home and abroad and has become an important export item. The Wegleithof, mentioned in a document for the first time in 1226, is located above St. Wolborg. Today is a special day. Krapfen, special South Tyrolean fritters, are to be made. Isabella brings a bowl containing the filling from her grandmother's house. Her mother, Bernadette Kapaura, has to bake 100 poppy seed Krapfen today. Her niece is being confirmed, and a banquet in Val d'Ultimo isn't complete without poppy seed Krapfen. Bernadette boils the poppy seed with sugar and a little cinnamon, clove powder, lemon zest and a tablespoon of rum. She uses only wheat flour for the dough. Before being processed, it has to stand for at least an hour. It's important that the oil in which the Krupfen are briefly fried is really hot. 
Otherwise, they absorb oil and become too greasy. Krupfen are often filled with apricot or cranberry jam in South Tyrol. But proper Krupfen for feast days must be made with poppy seed. One of the most typical South Tyrolean dishes is originally from Val Pusteria. Here, Paul and Margaret Niederwolfsgruber run a farmhouse tavern. Table reservations are necessary in the summer season because Margaret Niederwolfsgruber makes outstanding Schlutzkrapfen. Of course, she makes the dough herself. It consists of equal parts of rye and wheat flour with eggs, sunflower oil, salt and whey from the farm's own cows. The filling of the schlutzer, as they're also called, is made from the farm's own fresh topfen, quark, together with finely chopped onions and potatoes. With topfen and potatoes, it's more of a country dish. Many people today use spinach and topfen, but the traditional filling is potatoes and topfen. The cooking time is about four minutes. The schlitzer also tastes delicious when filled with porcini mushrooms or chanterelles. They're sprinkled with parmesan cheese before serving. Then a tidy portion of melted butter is added. This calorie bomb, which tastes extremely good, is finely sprinkled with chives, of course from the farm's own garden. So this is Valpusteria Schlutzkrapfen. <laughs>